day, mate. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you over there? It looks nice and sunny compared to freezing cold Australia at the moment. Is it freezing cold? Yeah. Yeah, it is icy uh, cold. It's, it's looking more proper out here, bro. Oh, mate. <laughs> there we go. Sorry rub to rub it in. I'm going to rub it in right now. I don't think you're that sorry about rubbing it in. I wouldn't be either. <laughs> well, How are you doing? New album out, new tour announced for Australia. The first tour in, geez, it feels like a lifetime ago. Was a big day out the last time you guys were down here? It was a lifetime ago, man. Uh, I, I like to think we came after that one time, I guess, but you might be totally right, man. I'm not sure. How's it feel to finally get your way back down here? It will be sunny by the time you get down here. So we're going to be switching from winter to summer. So you get to enjoy the nice Australian weather. Yeah, we, I'm excited. We always that kind of ask, you know, and it just seems like, it, uh, yeah, I hate to he make it sound like it, it's almost like an afterthought, not from us, but I'm like, where is it coming from? Why can we just do this like annually, bro? Every, we all our experiences have been nothing but awesome when we were there. So yeah, it's, it's definitely way past its due date. At least I hope that people there still are, uh, have some curiosity for Amp Farm. Maybe it's cooler that we, stayed away from the, not that long but you know hopefully we can get some kick-ass shows and and uh you know it is a th that anthology record was a lot of kids mm. summer jam or whatever so uh maybe we can kick it up and just have a cool little nostalgic party you know and, and that's the thing i actually i found it the other day i tried to get it this morning to show you just to show proof i still have the original cd with the sticker yeah. from the record label store still on it man it was one of those things it's soundtrack to the high school just like uh the tony hawks go uh pro skater games which yeah were on as well man like uh, yeah. yeah yeah it's it's crazy it, it, it's been such a big shift in the music like back in the day getting on something like tony hawk was such a big deal but now with spotify out there and how music grows how's that been like over the years from when you guys first started to now getting music out there to people yeah i mean it's you could say it's easier i guess but but that being said with just like the flooding of it maybe just makes it not such a big deal maybe i don't know I, you know I, my opinions of it are are irrelevant this thing the wheel turns whether you know what whatever happens uh so yeah i mean we're just happy to we, we just at, at any i'm trying to 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 think of like the pros and cons either way you know what mm. i mean and so i don't really know how to answer other than um you know, we it, it, it's nice to see, oh, you have millions of uh, uh, Spotify listeners, you know, but there's something cool and about just tangible, even though music mm -hmm. isn't tangible, there's something cool about, uh, you know, uh, the, the the records, you know, and yeah. it maybe give you, give you a chance to listen to two or three songs at a time rather than that, that I'm even guilty of like just shuffling through shit before it even gets to the chorus. I'm like, I, I found a better song than the one I wanted to hear, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I'm a shocker because in Australia, we got all the music come out at midnight on a Friday. So we get it before the rest of the world. And I am bad at sometimes going, okay, this sounds good so far. And I'll get to the chorus and I'll go through all of them. And then I'll go, okay, I like these ones the most. I'll listen to the first few. So it's a bad way of doing it. I shouldn't be doing it that yeah. way. <laughs> no, but I mean, but it's also like that, that you can do that. That's cool too, you know, but it's like, yeah, we're, we're definitely, uh, I guess you've become acclimated to the new system. You know mm. what I mean? And whether even just watching the shows and all of it, you know, I'm not, watch all this, this, this overload of information or, or entertainment and gobble it up like a, like a midnight snack, you know, and then maybe it's not the intention of the songwriter or, uh, or the director or whatever, you know, but this is the way it is. And some days I, 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 I do exactly the same as you. And in fact, I, uh, I, I have started collecting because Amp Farm, uh, the new record is on uh, vinyl for the first time. I started collecting some other uh, vinyls, even though I don't have a system because I'm kind of going down that rabbit hole. I want to get something really nice that I'm not going to want to change in a year, you know, mm -hmm. and then that stuff can get quite pricey. Um, but yeah, I have. It's funny that I have this. Uh, mini collection going with no uh no means to even play any of these uh the first uh smashing pumpkins the gish sessions you know and they like some of the takes that that they weren't used yet i have all these interesting vinyl records now and 
And again, that'll take me back to, uh, you know, listening to the mm. entire record, you know, and hearing the, hearing the, the, the little, the little things that make, uh, those bands so dope. And I'm glad you've said that because I thought I was crazy. I had, I was collecting vinyls for 18 months, probably had close to 60 before I actually got my vinyl player. So I'm glad. Oh I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we are, we are, we are both bonded by being uh, ridiculous, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like, <laughs> I'm like, when are you going to buy a record? You know? And then I'm also like, well, you know what? I don't even, and then we have like a little kind of a shitty record player. And I was like, I don't want to listen to the Gish sessions until it's I have this grandiose system, you know, and it's yeah. like, come on, dude, you're listening to have this shit on your phone speakers. Now, all of a sudden you want to be this, uh, you want everything perfect for, for Gish, but yeah, here we well, go. Well, that's the human nature. We're all a bit weird that way. I've got plenty of action figures I've never opened in my life as well, but uh, getting to it, speaking mm -hmm. of music, man, first album in nearly a decade. How, how's it feeling getting that finally out there? It was a bit of a surprise. I remember cold dropping just a couple of days after my birthday. I'm like, Holy shit, Alien Ant Farm is back. Yeah, it, it was cool, man. It was a, uh, it was just a good thing to get done. You know, uh, we fancied we fancied uh, ourselves uh, songwriters, and we want to uh, put our best foot forward. And uh, it took some time, you know. I, I it's there's songs on that record, and I hear uh, there's a few songs on that record that have like completely different lyrics and melodies it would be kind of fun to put out the same mm. song with a completely different vocal line but i was like on a mission i think maybe through my sobriety started coming uh twiddling my thumbs kind of maybe in, in with anxiety i gained a lot of that through uh sobriety i didn't know it was gonna gather but anyways i'm like all right i gotta go i'm going back to the park i'm going back to dog park i'm gonna rewrite this song i got to make it i know i can make it better i know i can make it better and that can be rad and that can also like be a detriment in a weird yeah. way you know i was like I, I, for this record i think it was awesome you know to just really just think in my head that this is a weird little chapter for ant farm that a brand that we've almost left for dead mm. at certain times so to water this little plant this little brand of ours to give it some water and watch new leaves sprout i want it to be on um like mature badass sonic songs that production i love and uh, the record i think is just going to be something for me in 10 years that i know i'm not going to think of wanting to change certain aspects of it or whatever i feel like it's just a, like a cool little snapshot of what i was personally going through lyrically and yeah it was like an ode to to uh, getting my my shit together, you know, and and there's some there's some little poignant moments in there that are maybe if someone else can enjoy that or take something from that, that's cool. But it really was selfishly like me just pointing at me, saying, "Dude, this is like this is your time to um, to uh, to be good or or keep just being a, a, a douchebag and 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 killing yourself with uh, drugs and alcohol, you know." And it was time, and this record shines um a light on that and it shines a light on like failed love and all the mm. little things that ant farms always kind of talked about uh you know ruining things i guess i'm a i'm a good i'm a good ruiner of things i gotta say the album opener the wrong things that hit me a bit hard i go back and think of all the wrong things i've said in my life i was like that was a really good song for me and i'm surprised there's no uh music video to it yet because i, I gotta say yeah. that's maybe one of my favorites on the album do you have a favorite track on the album i know it's kind of like picking your favorite kid but i don't know there's some definitely highlights for me on this one i think uh you've done something phenomenal here yeah it's cool uh there's little production tricks or there's moments of like really massive I, it's cool i'm like this doesn't sound like ant farm but uh, at the same time it sounds completely like us mm. you know there's a song called prosperous futures on there that just more we've done we've done deeper darker stuff on our first record even so i don't know if it's more mature or what but yeah i just there's there's little moments of 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 the songs that just like kind of catch me by surprise and I, I you know i always love the i love the the musicianship that that i get to sing over has been like really inspirational and yeah it's just it's an easy listen at the same time um again just an ode to like uh personal going through and and yeah i think i'm really gonna like this record like 
a couple years from now, you know, mm. it's fun to like, uh, get it, kind of make it and then tour and play a few of the songs. But yeah, I think later on is when it'll come. And I hope I did my due diligence by like taking those, uh, extra, uh, dog park trips to make sure everything was solid and sound from my end, you know? Yeah, well, I think you've done a phenomenal job myself. I love it. I've had it on repeat for quite a while now, and I'm looking forward to hearing some of the songs live. Like I said, you're finally coming back to Australia. You said you're going to play some new songs. How's the reception been to playing some of these new songs live? It's been cool. Yeah, again, uh, with with the whole Spotify thing, uh, we have actually had one song kind of uh, making little uh, little uh, appearances at, on radio stations across the country here and there sprinkled. But the one of the benefits of the Spotify is and that is like everyone is in charge of their own playlist. Mm. It's you know about where back in the day it was just kind of fed to you through through the few uh, the few funnels that were out there, you know. So um, in that sense, when three hundred or four hundred or six hundred people come to an ant farm show, the majority of those people have already know a song like last dance or know a song like so cold or storms over from the new record so it's it's cool it feels like it has a little bit of gravity at least in our little circle our little night to be in your city it's it's already becoming a sing-along with with some of those newer tracks which, which is great yeah and that's exactly what you want as well and i'm looking forward to hearing them live i've got to ask though it has been a while since you've been to australia do you have any fond memories of your last time down here because like I said, it's been a lifetime ago. You're going to have people going to this ant farm show that may not have been yeah. born last time you were here. Oh my gosh! Uh, yeah, you know, just it sounds. I don't know, trying to kiss ass or cliche, but just just the people, man. It's just it's such a it's such a trip to get a a warm welcome. There's a few places, you know, uh, we we get it in the UK, and which I'm surprised why we haven't been to australia more it seems like it's always like an afterthought not with us but when we always bring it up to the powers that be at least people that book us and stuff it's like why haven't we gone back there it should be like an annual thing or you know yeah. i don't know but I, again my, my my fondest memory was just some of the beaches but but obviously the people you know i was really like just kind of overwhelmed with how uh how positive they were for the band and towards towards us you know maybe you guys are just cool people i don't know i like to think we're cool people let's let's go with that we're just cool people so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you there's no assholes in australia of any kind yeah 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 let's uh yeah let's go with that let's pretend that's true <laughs> <laughs> Mate, yeah, I've, right. I've got to ask because I've told a couple of people I was interviewing you today and they've all asked the same thing. And I was like, you know what? I've, I've got my own theory on what it is. How'd you come up with the name Alien Ant Farm? Well, I think it was, uh, I think it was Terry, our guitar player's idea um, of, again, and I think, I don't think anyone really went in too deep into the thought about it, but I think the idea was like, what if, uh, what if aliens created the earth and then they went away to watch us like succeed or fail or just how, what we do with this ball, like the same way a kid has an, an ant farm when he's a child to watch that thing succeed or not. Um, maybe the earth is a giant ant farm for aliens. And I, more than, more than the, the concept of it all, I was just, I thought it was a peculiar, a peculiar enough name that it would just kind of maybe stick for people you know i just thought I, i'm down with that let's that you know that that sounds like the coolest name i've heard uh tossed around in the last few days while we were throwing out stupid names let's just go with it you know yeah well look to be honest with you that's a much more interesting story than what i thought you're gonna say i thought you're gonna say something yeah. like oh i had a friend jim he used to have alien stickers on his ant farm and that's how we got the name oh uh, yeah <laughs> yeah well it, yeah you know a lot of a lot of silly band names for sure. I wouldn't say ours is any less silly or or serious. I don't know. Again, it was just I think what else was toyed around with uh I think we toyed with the idea of calling the band uh, Masters of the Universe, which yeah. was obviously like a trademark issue from the get-go, I imagine, you know. I don't think a uh, He-Man is going to be uh too happy with us stealing his whole uh, empire, so that was again masters of the universe sounds like extremely cocky too almost like we are the greatest at 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 uh 
sappy love song instrumentation <laughs> on the planet, you know? So I don't know. Yeah, Maybe, no, yeah Parm's good. Sounds like some weird power hair metal band from the 80s. Yeah, <laughs> it's Ex- exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, man, it's been a pleasure having you today, and I absolutely cannot wait for you to come down here. The wife and I have already got tickets to the show, and you're coming down with uh, CKY as well. Like, how big of a yeah. nostalgia trip is that for people? Yeah, you know, we were supposed to come a couple of years ago to Australia with CKY, and I, I don't know what happened, but it fell through. I don't know if it was, like, lack of, lack of uh, tickets or whatever it was, but I was bummed because – for one, Australia, two, just to get out there with CKY. I still haven't met those guys. So, and I, I legitimately have like through the years always thought they were pretty cool riff riders, you know? And so mm-hmm. I'm excited to meet those guys and uh, who knows, we might get uh, more, more, more than enough of each other before, before we know it, you know, we're going to, uh, we're going to the UK and Europe with those guys too. So it's going to be cool doing a little bit of a round trip. Well, thank you so much for being here with me, mate. I cannot wait for the tour and congratulations on the new album. It's an absolute banger. Is there anything you wanted to say to the Australian fans before I let you go? Hey, just uh, if you have any interest in in, in Alien Out Farm, you know, who knows when we're going to be out again. I'd like to make it, you know, sooner than every 45 years or whatever it's been. Um, I'm stoked that you you and your wife are coming out, man. Please uh, please come say hello and, and give me a high five or a hug, and, and it'd be great to uh, to uh, see you in person. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I do, mate. I'll send you a message. I'll make sure we uh, we have a quick hello at the show. Awesome, dude. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I will see you in Sydney, guys. Tickets are on sale now for February. It's been a pleasure, mate. Cannot wait. Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers, mate. Bye.